Hi guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to watch me create a piece that is called Light Overcomes Darkness. And the idea behind this piece was all the obligations and stresses and thoughts and um, the society's way of seeing things and all these things that just kind of pull at you and pull you in different directions because you're really not sure what to believe, uh, especially for people that haven't relied on themselves yet. And this piece represents that light that is inside your mind and in your heart and how you really, really have to trust your own uh, guidance and your own way of seeing things and not buy into what everyone around you wants or thinks uh, you're supposed to do because ultimately the choice is yours. Because if you do go by what everyone is saying, then you're just going to get pulled in so many different directions because everyone has a different opinion on what it is that you should do. Uh, this is this is a great podcast because in this podcast, we talk more about some of the struggles that we're going through as far as being able to take deliberate time off and maybe uh, avoiding that pitfall. So uh, without further ado, enjoy the painting and the podcast. Random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi. And Clee. And today we are talking about something. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Luckily for you, I do. Sweet. We're talking today about taking deliberate time off. Dun, Ooh, dun, dun. Yeah. This is an awesome topic. And we actually, so one of our rogue artist family on Patreon, somebody that we adore very much, had had some great insights on the last live pod that we did. And we asked him to... um send us an email that kind of summarized what he was talking about. And so I'm going to read that email to you because it's awesome. And this comes from Ev. And Ev is a terrific artist and a good human. And his website is justbecauseart.com, yeah, I believe. He is an amazing artist and a fantastic human. Yeah. Yeah. So Ev had to say this. Uh, first of all, he said, hey guys, nice to be back with you again, because Ev was on a short sabbatical from everything. Tonight, Rafi asked me to restate what I posted in conversation on Podbean, so here you go. I went on a jag for about a month and created a ton of pieces, but something felt like it wasn't right. I took a few weeks off and gave myself time to review. A few weeks off. And yeah. I was like, dang, that's <laughs> awesome. I took a few weeks off and gave myself time to review and think about things and have since come up with some different ideas and new directions to grow. Had I treated what I'm doing solely as a business, viewing everything only through business goggles, which by the way is a term that I love, I would never have given myself permission to do that. I truly believe that if I had viewed the entire process from short-range goals, purely financial goals, or from a perspective of ruthless business efficiency, I would have had no choice but to logically completely abandon what I was doing. Well, that's just silly. I'm an artist. Cul-de-sacs and curveballs are what I do best. I really believe <laughs> that for me to become a stronger artist, I have to allow for development, change, and growth. And no matter what business or pursuit I choose, education, R&D, and development come at a cost. I count myself lucky. I get to love what I do. I get to live my journey as a completely integrated part of my life. Not everyone can say that. Nice to be back from my meditation sojourn to be with my peeps, Ev. Oh, that is so awesome. So fantastic on so many levels. The main takeaway here was that it seems counterproductive through the lens of business goggles and ruthless business efficiency as i also i really enjoyed reading yeah. that to take a three-week sabbatical when you've got shit to do yeah right yeah but um you have to sometimes it doesn't and, and it can be however you set it up but like you got to recharge the batteries and allow yourself the time and space to think about stuff right. to look at stuff to uh reprioritize to just be it's interesting uh one the, the last podcast that we did we actually talked a little bit about that about uh not adding in the stress into your creative career yeah but i think it's interesting because uh ev's point of view of like taking a few weeks off or taking three weeks off or yeah. like let's say taking a month off um it's it's funny because 
when I think about the things that we do and I think about the times where you and I maybe did not take that vacation mm -hmm. or decided not to take that trip because we've got things that we got to do. We got to, I've, I've got commissions and I've got this and I've got that. Mm -hmm. And we've got this uh, show coming up in three weeks and I got to make sure that I get so many pieces done for it. It's funny because like a lot of those things uh, that we stressed out about during that time, that's not what people associate with being an artist. You know, no. whenever whenever somebody's out there, it's like, well, must be nice. To you know? just leisurely throw some paint at some stuff and pretty much like you're probably sipping on wine and philosophizing most of the day and uh, <laughs> laying in the sun, sunbathing and uh, whatever else you artist types or just, do. Or just working in a flock and completely naked. Yeah. You know, a smock a and, <laughs> and uh, an artist smock. With a nice cigar. Yeah, with a, a nice fancy cigar. And at your side. So it's admittedly um personally uh i thought about a, a three-week sabbatical right or even a month-long sabbatical right and like where you completely unplug right? right and i thought to myself i don't actually know if i know how to do that if i have myself set up in a way where i would know how to do that because you and i took zero vacations and zero time off for the first half of our career thus far. Oh, yeah. Like the first five years, there was no time we, off. It was all about art shows and creating art and running our business. We literally treated a, – a, we had a three-day show uh, about two hours away from where we are. And that was our vacation. We were working. We were doing a show. Yep. But because it was at a nice resort place, that was like a vacation for us. Yeah, and that was finally year four. Right. So, um, and then, uh, time in recent times, in the last five years or so, we've taken trips, but we also take work with us. Yeah. So the cameras come with us, the laptops come with us. Uh, the last time we were up north with our family, I was photographing product and editing it and posting it and managing orders. Um, and so, and that's fine. A working vacation is fine also, but, um, it's almost like, that idea of unplugging was completely off the board unless you're sick. Yeah. You have to almost bring yourself to the point where you physically can't in order to give yourself permission. Which is absolutely and completely ridiculous. Yeah, totally. And then, then, right? So you're sick. Let's say you're sick for a week or you're sick for two weeks even. Then you come back. And then you double down on the stress because you were out of the game for two weeks. So then to compensate, you're like, now I have to work twice as hard and basically bring myself back up to the stress levels even more so than right. I was before to compensate for my selfish sick time that I had. You know what? And it's hilarious because, again, this is not what most people identify when they think about an artist and their career. Right. They don't think about these things. They don't. Now, I'm not saying that these are the things that are necessary in order to be an artist. No. Um, but, I, you know, like in the last podcast where we talked about it, we talked about the fact that it is very easy to bring all these stressful motivators into your business. Right. We set it up this way. Yeah. Because you think that this is what it needs to be stressful in order to be able to survive because it's not easy. We've listened to some audiobooks, uh, podcasts, like read some books where these folks who are legitimately successful in business are saying work less yeah. and do better and yeah. do more and have a better quality of life. And you'll probably be surprised to find that you make more money. And it's like, what? I mean, it might as well be a different language if right. you're not living that life and if you're and if you are doing what we did do to ourselves where you're micromanaging every aspect and you're never giving yourself permission to step away um, and you're burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, it seems like I don't even understand that. And it's really easy to do that. It's really easy to do that, especially as an artist, uh, because you're going into a creative craft, which the only way, unless you're part of gallery and like they're the ones that are picking up the bulk, but in all in all honesty, like you could be part of a gallery, you're not going to make an income to be able to survive as an artist unless you're part of one of those really really top notch galleries, and even then, they're taking about fifty to sixty percent right of the the value of the art. So like 
if you're going to make it as an artist, you have to run a business. Well, what do most of us know about running a business? It sucks. It's stressful. It's hard. Yes. It's not easy. Everybody would be doing it if it was easy. Most entrepreneurs that I know, and I don't know that many, you actually grew up around a lot of entrepreneurs and they're constant, they're always there, right? Whether it's a brick and mortar shop or they're doing it out of their house, they're always there. Their kids are there. Yep. Their brothers and sisters are there, like the extended family's there. Everyone's working. You're working all the time. Even entrepreneurs that we know right now that have brick and mortar, they're there all the time. Yep. And that's just the way it is when you're running a business, especially a fledgling business. And that's just the hustle, right? Right. That's what you got to do. You're like saving up your leisure time for retirement. But what if retirement doesn't come? Yeah. Yeah. Like, which which is one of the things with me, even though I'm busting my ass all the time working and stuff like that, like I have no illusions that I'm going to retire at any point. I'm going to go out with a paintbrush in my hands. Right. You're doing what you love. I'm going to be doing what I love till the day that I shuffle off this mortal coil. Right. So, uh, but, but you got to look at what, what is your quality of life right now? Right. Uh, if you can't give yourself permission to take two weeks off, a month off, a day off. And if you, and it, then let's say you do as a fun experiment, right? And then you're stressed out, twice as stressed out when you come back from it. Right. What is the quality of life there? And what are you doing for your creativity with that? Right, exactly. Because we actually need that time to decompress, to be able to really get into a place where we are energized again and creative and passionate and creative about what and we passionate. Do. Yeah. Now, if you are, if you are constantly stressed out because you're running your business and you're going here and you're going there and I got to get these things done and I got to get that done and I got to get this done and I got to get that done, then, um, your creativity is going to suffer. And I think really what it comes down to is the fact that for the most part, when it comes to us as artists, we're doing it to ourselves. Oh, yeah, totally. We are. And you, I could blame, I, I say you, I, we, uh, the royal we, if you will. I could blame other people. Yeah, well, I have contracts with shops and they expect things by a certain date. And I have uh, customers waiting on stuff and this and that. But um, I also set up those parameters. I also said, this is how long it takes me to produce pieces for you. And so I'll have it done in this time frame. And I hold myself to that. And I'm the one that's berating myself uh, to make it happen. Right. And so on and so forth. People, for the most part, are very understanding. And they are. A lot of that is dictated by how it is that you feel that you're supposed to run your business in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if your deadlines are very, very tight, that's because you think that you're supposed to meet these kind of deadlines and do all these kind of things. And like not understanding that a lot of times when it comes to the creativity and the creativity flowing from you, you want to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Yeah. Now, another thing too that we run into is – you know, like one of the reasons that, okay, well, if we go on vacation, well, I've got social media and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like the standard in social media, you want to be consistent. You want to be posting every day. You follow all these rules and guidelines that people set out out there when it comes to marketing, whether or not you're marketing your business, you're marketing your art, you're marketing yourself, you're doing this. Uh, how many times do you post on social media? You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. And a lot of times... When it comes to being an artist, you're running the business yourself and you're taking a look at all this information that is out there of what it means to run a successful business mm -hmm. because you don't know yourself. And at this point, maybe you don't trust yourself enough to like make the decisions that are right for you because mm -hmm. you are more concerned about right, running a successful business. And so at that point, you start to conveniently uh, mold your business behind the the tactics of someone else, not understanding that a lot of those people, it's the same thing with the videos. I was like, I want to post a video uh, every three days and da, 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 da. And like, I had all these like standards, not realizing that a lot of these people that do that have a team of editors, have a them. team of people that yeah. help them. Whereas when it comes to the way that we run our business, we are not YouTubers. We are artists who happen to record videos and share them on YouTube. 
Yeah. So like, that's not our career. I need, as an artist, you need time to be able to create your product. You need time to be able to post it online. You need to run your business. A lot of times we're doing all of this stuff ourselves. And if we follow the standards of what it means to run a successful business, according to everyone else, there's just not enough time in the day. You make a good, you made a lot of good points there, but uh, something I'm just realizing right now is like some of my, uh, processing time my creation time uh how long it takes me to make something was determined by the first e-commerce platform i was on right i read a thing when i first set it up that said like your average buyer would like to have stuff delivered to them or at least shipping out within three to five business days and i was like oh okay that you know uh, okay so everything everything that i do I'm going to do it in three to five business days, which means uh, whether it's simple or complicated, three to five business days, whether I have the materials on hand or I have to order them three to five business days, which means if I have to order them, I'm going to be biting my nails until those uh, materials get here and then trying to make it happen in the fifth day so I can ship it out. And it wasn't until like a couple of years ago that I realized like, wait a second, like that's unnecessary stress. Three to five business days is great for a lot of stuff, but it doesn't work across the board. Right. Why am I doing this to myself? Right. I changed my creation time, if you will. How long does it take me to get your piece of jewelry made? To one to two weeks and under special circumstances, longer. And you know what happened? Nothing. No one yelled at me. Yeah. Everyone was fine. And uh, same with, like, YouTube. I think, you know, like, YouTube has suggestions as far as how often you should be posting content. Right. You should be posting at this time. You should be posting at least once every other day or at least once a week. You should be posting this. Yeah. You should be posting that. The The irony is that then when you look at the actual, like, progress of, let's say, other YouTubers or other artists with all these standards that are out there of how to run a business, and you see these people that are not following those rules, Mm -hmm. and they're doing just fine. Yeah, totally. And so what has happened when we've uh, taken hiatus from YouTube or podcasting? Nothing. Nothing bad happened. Right. Maybe uh, a handful of people are like, oh, we miss you. Why? Because they love us. Yeah. Because they enjoy us. Exactly. Not because we're in trouble. Right. One of our favorite authors uh, puts out a series of books that we love. And we've been waiting for the next book in the series for six years. Yeah. Six years. Six years. Whereas he would release a book just about every year or every two years. Uh, It took six years. And neither one of us were like, we hate you. We're not going to yes. read the next book. We uh, And now this, the book six years later is being released. Uh, he did an interview and he said, I wasn't going to force the book to happen. This particular book in the series is epic. It's actually two books. And I wasn't trying to, I tried some new stuff that I never tried before. And it took a lot longer. He wasn't even on sabbatical. He was just working on the books. Yeah. Uh we weren't mad at him. Sure, it's like frustrating. Like, oh, I want this next book, right? Yeah. But year three comes in. It's like, well, where in the hell is this book going to come out? But the fact is that as time passes and if I'm still alive and the book comes out. We're going to read it. We're going to read or it. Or listen to it yeah. in audiobook format. Yeah. A friend of ours who has owned a brick and mortar shop for a very long time here in town has recently decided to close down her brick and mortar shop, do business entirely differently and take a year sabbatical. A year sabbatical. She wants she wants to spend time with her daughter. Yeah. She wants to go fishing. She wants to go fishing. She wants to just enjoy life because for the last I don't know how many years she's been running a brick and mortar location and that is It's been an exhausting It's, it's ride. been an exa- yeah. Yeah, and she did great uh so I had this split reaction uh when she said it of like <sighs> A year, a year. And also like, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Last year I released my book, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of taking a sabbatical to write my book. You tried to do everything. I tried to do everything at the same time. And I even had people on YouTube that were like, dude, just lay off the videos. Take it, take a break, take your time, settle down because you're doing too much. There's two sides of it. Like, I don't believe that you could do too much, but I also don't believe that you could do too little. 
You know, like I think you could do just what's right for you. And uh, what I realize is that a lot of this has a lot to do with what you think other people are going to think. Yes, what's going to happen to you? Which if you, you do this. are most likely absolutely and completely wrong. And if someone has a, a rough time with you taking some time off for yourself, well, then fuck them. You know, like totally. that's that's basically where I'm at now because a lot of the decisions that we made here in the studio, especially during the the first five years, was all based on I want to make sure that I'm taken seriously. I want people to know that I'm not letting down. You know, like you're basically guided by what everybody else wants and paying no attention to how it is that you're feeling while you're like running through what is called the rat race. Mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like, um, you know, the, the desire to please others, not let people down. It's right. also personal importance. Recently we were kind of forced to slow things down, uh, shut down the studio because of stuff going on with the pandemic. Yep. Um, two weeks. Uh, now it wasn't a vacation. For us, we were still doing things, but we shut down the the art creation side of the studio. Right. Um, we have uh, galleries that we belong to. I have freelance contracts with stores, orders from them. I had online orders. I had existing commissions. We have a media schedule. You had several commissions going. Several commissions. I have businesses in town that are displaying my art and they're just starting to open up and contacting me. Right. Uh, we had to get in touch with all of those people, places, etc., and let them know we're going to be a bit off radar for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and all of them, including the businesses that like their customers are waiting on me to do stuff so I can get it for them. were totally cool with it. Yep. Except for one person. Right. Uh, one person was not cool with it. And I realized in that moment, something I wouldn't have realized until I was faced with that situation. That's, th that's their deal. Yeah. Like they can be upset about it if they want to, but I don't need to own that guilt. Every relationship that you have with people the the problem is when it's a relationship with your mom and the perspective <laughs> that your mom has of you or the perspective that your dad has of you or the perspective that your your uh, second aunt's cousin has of you because when family gets together for Thanksgiving they're going to talk about how Clee is and actually re working a real job and blah 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 mm -hmm. and the thing the problem is that a lot of times the way that we display that we are busy well, I'm a busy person. Take me seriously. I'm a busy person is by not taking that vacation time because the other option is like, well, if she doesn't actually do any work. I don't ever actually see her working. I don't see her blah, 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 because you're out there and you're enjoying life and getting inspired and creating your stuff. So I have a feeling that a lot of the extra pressure that gets added definitely gets added by us and it gets added by us because we are trying to prove our worth to someone else or to society or to whatever by showing how busy we are. I am so busy that I can't even take a vacation. Yeah. I, I could tell you guaranteed that our first five years of being artists, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. I am so busy that I can't even take a vacation. Could I have taken a vacation? Of course I could have. I work for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm my own boss. You're definitely able to. The only problem was that as my own boss... I was an a-hole back then to myself. You were a crappy boss. Yeah. So was I. Now, the other thing is, and Ev mentioned it in his um, email, and it's the elephant in the room. The other reason people won't take time off is money. Yes. Where's the money going to come from if we shut the studio down for two weeks, for a month, uh, or for any days at all? How am I going to make that money? Yeah. Just because you take a week off or you take two weeks off or you take a month off doesn't mean that everyone that loves your work or your art or what you do is just going to leave. Right. Because if anything, we all understand when someone needs to take some time off. Definitely. We all 
are rooting for everyone else to take a goddamn vacation because not enough people take the vacations. We want people to take time off. To we, have a good quality of life. Exactly. So what do you say to the voice in your head, right, that's like, not only am I shutting down what I do for two weeks so that I could have this time off, meaning money might not come in because I'm not there, but I'm going to be spending money on this vacation. So not only am I not bringing money in, but I'm also spending money's going out so that I can enjoy myself. I think the most important thing to realize is that the same way that you make an investment into your products, mm -hmm. into R&D, it is the same thing when you go on vacation. You are making an investment in your creativity and in your peace of mind because you could be stressed out and run your business for 10 years. And I guarantee you that by the end of it, uh, you're not going to be a joy to work with. You're not going to be a joy to work with and your business will have suffered. Most definitely. You could take that time off for yourself. Understand that the quality of your life comes first and foremost above anything else, especially when it comes. That's the irony of money. The irony of money is that especially when you're working in a creative field, when you are happy and you are pushing forward, despite how much money you have, you are going to make more money. If you are stressed out about money, even if you have money, you are not going to be as productive. You're not going to be as creative. You're not going to be as innovative and you are not going to be pushing the envelope and taking risks. If your entire career is based on only making money, then you are not going to make money. You're going to limit how much money you can make. That is the irony. The yeah. people that take risks, the people that enjoy what they do, the people that push the envelope and push outside of their comfort zone, those are the people that actually make the money in the careers, especially when it comes to a creative career. I agree with you. I believe that's true. I have experiential knowledge of that. When I am happy and feeling charged up and passionate, business is better. If you are basing your success levels on only money, your business is going to suffer. And like, you are definitely going to and suffer. And you are definitely going to suffer. I guess the long and short of it is uh, you're the boss, right? Yeah. Uh, allow yourself time to recharge your batteries. Yes. And stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Stop being an a-hole to your employee, which is you. And allow yourself to take time off whenever it is that you want to take that time off because you're a creative. So you want to re-energize yourself. You know, some people don't even want to take that time off to take a walk in the park for a few hours because they're like, well, I've got, I, I've got things that I got to like, you yeah. got to, you got to take that time off. You got to give yourself, um, the ability to be able to play when you're in the studio and when you're out of the studio, everything does not have to be about running your business. The main thing that I learned here from, uh, reading Ev's thing was that like in reading it, I was like, oh, you mean I could take three weeks off to just focus on me? For the sole purpose of like having that time. Yeah. Like that, that to me is ridiculous. Why I'm my own boss. Why would I not allow myself that time? And honestly, if there's anybody out there that had a problem with me taking that time to myself. Then they should go fly a kite. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So it, these, these are all things that like, you know, we're talking about, we've, we've been doing this for a while. Uh, we've gone through the ins and outs. We've been stressed out as artists and realize and been in a place where like, uh, we weren't stressed out. We were enjoying the ride. We were taking risks. We were having fun. We were being kids mm -hmm. and still running a business and running a business successfully. So like given those two sides, like, there are two sides to this, like you, but it, but it all comes down to what it is that you choose that you want to do. There's a lot more sides than just two, but it, you know, it comes down to who it is that you want to be every day of your life. What kind of career do you want to have as an artist? And does the word career have to bring with it this like serious responsibility thing, or could you make it whatever you want as a creative who thinks outside of the box? 
your business is not going to fail because you decided to take time off for yourself. And if your business did fail because you took two weeks off, uh, then something is wrong with how yeah. your business is Re- set up. Then, then you got to reevaluate your business. It's one of the things yeah. that Clee and I have thought about because the way that we set up our business when we first started, we trapped ourselves. We, we trapped made it ourselves. So we could never leave. Yeah, yeah. So, like right now is the reevaluation time where we're like rebuilding, restructuring everything so that we don't have to be there constantly to run every aspect and micromanage every aspect of our business. So as artists, think about that when you're heading out into a world and decide to make your own business, don't, don't set yourself up in a way where you're going to trap yourself. Yeah. Just, just think about those things. I think that's a good place to conclude. I remember working for a really great lady back in the day who was passionate about what she did, but she had trapped herself in entrepreneurship and she was bitter and volatile and she knew it. And she said, don't ever do that to yourself, okay? You're a creative soul. Don't ever trap yourself in that way. But at the same time, I took that, what she said, and, you know, you also kind of have to experience things for yourself. You do. And uh, go your own path. So I'm revisiting that that she said to me so many over a decade ago, and that was good advice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It is is good advice, and you're going to hear it when you need it. And that's what matters. Listen, everybody out there, you're going to experience your art career in whichever way it is that you want to experience your art career. Maybe you're going to go in and you're going to be like, I'm a serious artist and I'm going to work hard. And like for like three or four years or five years, the same way that we did, like you're not going to give yourself a vacation. It's just every day, every day, every day, you're going to be doing shows, doing all these things and like whatever. And then at the end of it, you're going to realize for yourself that like you need to take that time off. The difference is because I know a lot of people out there that don't stop and reevaluate, stop and reevaluate. Take a look and see if you cannot allow yourself to give yourself three weeks off, then it is time to reevaluate because you should be allowed to take as much time off as you need. So that's just food for thought. And I think that's it. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts as far as like how you guys feel about this. And like, you know, you you guys out there, you guys are the amazing artists that are out there making your art careers, making your art, uh, doing whatever it is that you do with your art, making that happen. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this. And as far as like, um, you know, the way that you look at your career and what aspects you might have put in place to make sure that you don't get trapped in a a gilded cage, as I like to call it. Like this place that you thought you wanted to be, but you actually didn't want to be. And I want to say a special thank you to Ev for sharing this email and sharing that perspective with us so that we may ponder it. Yes. Thank you so much, Ev. And I want to say thank you to all of you guys for listening. You guys are absolutely amazing and I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to subscribe to more stuff like this, go ahead and click somewhere around here to subscribe. I'm not sure where it might be. And uh, that's it. You want to say good night, Clee? Good night or good day, <laughs> whatever it is for you. Adios. 